Okay, welcome to my webinar where we are going to troubleshoot your pelvic floor. We're going to learn exactly why those bladder leaks are happening. So are you tired of living in fear of peeing your pants in public? Are you afraid to sneeze or do something active because you might need to change your underwear? Are you ready to do something about it? We're going to go through all of my tips, all of my tricks, so you can understand your own body, why you're having those bladder leaks, why traditional Kegels probably aren't enough to fix it. And I also want to give you some hope that most of these are things that you can resolve. So we're going to talk about four reasons why you're still having those bladder leaks. And we're also going to learn about six different things about how your pelvic floor is functioning. So bladder leaks can be resolved. Doing exercise is about 80% effective in helping people with these bladder leaks. Doing just Kegels is only effective in a small percentage of people. So the problem always comes down to what else should you be doing? The answer to that depends on what's going wrong. And so that's what we're going to figure out. We're going to learn what's going wrong, wrong with your body by the end of this webinar. So things I hear all the time. I'm afraid to run in and around and have fun with my kids or with my grandkids. I feel like I'm missing out on making memories because I'm afraid I'll pee. I'm self-conscious someone will smell the urine on me. I'm terrified to pee my pants in public. I bought Kegel balls and they're not helping or they're annoying to you so they're just sitting in my drawer. I'm worried my leaking will get worse with age. I'm nervous to go out for fear of needing to get to the bathroom quickly or needing to change my pants. And it's just a normal part of having kids or aging. So if any of these are you, you are not alone. So I'm Carly Wallace. I'm a public health physiotherapist and also a mom of three kids. I became so passionate, passionate about pelvic health, um, but in particular about helping women overcome these bladder leaks after having to overcome my own, unfortunately. So after the birth of my first child, I had severe tearing, I had a prolapse, I had incontinence. I was peeing when I coughed, I was peeing when I sneezed, when I lifted little Jacob out of his crib, going up the stairs. Um, I was try, try, tried to start returning to exercise postpartum. I couldn't make it through a class, a video, a run without soaking through pads. I was always terrified when I went back to my ball hockey league that I would leak out of my pad. So I'm now leak free. I play tag, I play soccer, I play hide and go seek with my kids. I can run, I can jump, I can work out without pads or worry. I can sneeze without fear. Um, I actually did a triathlon and a half marathon this year. So I wanna show you and inspire you that you can do this too. It doesn't matter if you had kids four months ago or 40 years ago, this can improve. So there are four reasons you are still having your bladder leaks. So number one, you're only doing your Kegels sitting at a stoplight or laying in bed. And we're gonna go through this a little bit more. Number two, you bought some Kegel balls or a Kegel trainer thinking it will solve your problem. Number three, you're not doing anything because you're not sure you're doing the exercises correctly. And that's a big barrier. People don't wanna to spend tons of time doing these exercises when they're unsure if they're even doing them right. Um, or number four, you didn't do anything because you didn't know there was a solution. And we're often told that it's normal, right? It's a normal part of having kids or a normal part of aging. So here's what our pelvic floor looks like. This is looking at it from the bottom up. Here we're looking down into the pelvis. So it's essentially a big bowl of muscles. It sits in the bottom of our pelvis. When it contracts, it squeezes and then it also lifts up. When it relaxes, it drops back down. So essentially a Kegel is the name for that isolated contraction is just a squeeze and a lift of this muscle. So if we look at someone from a side view, here's their pubic bone at the front, here's their tailbone at the back. So here's our bladder here, here's our uterus, and then our rectum here. So our urethra, where we pee out of, here's our pelvic floor muscle, that big bowl of muscles in the bottom. Our urethra has to pass through the muscle. Our vagina, or that vaginal canal, also has to go through the muscle. And then our rectum also has to go through that muscle. So when it squeezes and lifts, so picture this muscle squeezing and lifting up, it's preventing anything from exiting, whether that be pee or poop. 
or in your case, it's not doing that. <laughs> so what can be wrong with it? These are six things we are going to learn about right now about your body. So it can be, of course, too weak. And that's often what we normally think about is that muscle is just too weak. It can also be too tight. It can be not coordinated. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Your reflex might not be working. Your fast twitch is too slow or you have weak glutes. So these can all be different reasons why you're having bladder leaks. So let's go through each one. We're going to check it out on you. So how do I know if I'm doing it correctly? And that's one thing I hear all the time as well. So we're going to figure that out. So it's the exact muscles you would use to stop your flow of urine or to hold back a tube. Um, think about squeezing and or lifting up a marble into your vagina. What muscles would you use? I want you to try that now. What muscles would you use to stop that flow of pee? What muscles would you use to try to lift something up into your vagina? So biggest mistakes is people want to try to squeeze their bum. So when I, try, I tell them to try to do this, they're clenching their bum cheeks together. Um, that is not your pelvic floor. Or they're bracing or crunching forward with their abdominals. Um, if you were to place your hand on your belly, right around your belly button, when you try to do that pelvic floor contraction or that Kegel or that lift, your belly should be either not moving or it might gently pull inwards towards you. It should not be pushing out. The other thing people will do incorrectly is when I tell them to do a Kegel or ask them to do a Kegel, they're pushing down through their pelvic floor like you would push down to push out a toot or to push out a bowel movement. That is not a Kegel. I actually want you to do the opposite thing. So you can push down and then you can try to do the opposite by lifting back up again. That might help you out a little bit too. So if you were to imagine someone was watching you do these things, they shouldn't know that you're doing an exercise, right? You shouldn't be moving it all from the outside. That bowl of muscles from the inside is really the only thing moving other than your belly might gently pull inwards. So things you can do to 100% know if you're doing this correctly, insert a finger. So put a finger into your vagina and see if you can feel that muscle squeezing around your finger. It shouldn't squeeze and it should actually gently pull, try to pull your finger in further. Um, a great place to do that is either laying in bed, sitting on the toilet or in the shower even. Um, if when you're sitting on the toilet, next time you go pee, can you stop your flow of urine? Right? If you can try to do that Kegel, that pelvic floor contraction, and your urine flow stops or slows down, that's your pelvic floor. You're doing it correctly. Um, you can ask your partner during intercourse, can they feel you squeezing around them? Um, or if you place your finger on your perineum area, which is the area between, so here's vagina hole here, here is rectum here, so your perineum area is right in between. If you place your finger there on the outside, can you feel that tightening up? You should feel that, feel that area tightening. That is your pelvic floor. So you are doing it right, right? So if your pelvic floor is too weak, it's not gonna have a very effective squeeze around your urethra to stop any leaks from coming out. If your pelvic floor is too tight, it's not gonna be available to work for you when you need it. It can also be both. So how do we know if your pelvic floor is on the weaker side? So do you have two or at least two of any of these? So you have stress incontinence, which essentially is you are leaking with a cough, a sneeze, a lift, a jump leaking um, with a reason for movement. You are leaking pee while you're rushing to the bathroom after a strong urge. So you get a strong urge and you're running to the bathroom and you're leaking pee on the way there. Um, if you feel like your tampons won't stay in, they feel like they wanna slide out all the time. You have a feeling of heaviness or an aching feeling in your pelvic floor or vaginal area. If you have to wipe several times after a bowel movement, so you feel like it takes a long time to get clean, that is a sign of a weak pelvic floor. You have less control over passing gas, so you feel like those toots might squeak out a little bit more than they used to. Um, you have a feeling or a bulging sensation at the opening of your vagina. You dribble after you stand up from the toilet. You're unable to completely stop your first thing in the morning pee, so if you can't completely stop that off. Uh, you feel like you're getting vaginal farts, so you feel like that air is pushing out of your vagina, causing a farting noise. That is a sign of a weak pelvic floor. Uh, also, if you have a poor breathing pattern, and we're also going to talk a little bit more about what that means. So, do you have at least two of those? So how weak is it? Let's figure out how weak your pelvic floor might be. So for your first thing in the morning pee, so that tends to be our biggest pee just because we've been holding it through the night. 
If you're sitting on the toilet doing that first thing in the morning pee and you can completely stop your flow of urine for at least two full seconds, your pelvic floor is fairly strong. If you can stop another pee throughout the day, so maybe not your first thing in the morning pee, but you can stop one of your later pee, so a smaller flow pee. Um, if you can stop that for at least two seconds, but not your first thing in the morning pee, your pelvic floor is moderately strong. If you're unable to completely stop any flow, you can maybe slow it down, uh, but you can't fully stop it at all for two seconds. It's definitely, definitely on the weaker side. Um, another hint is if you do insert a finger, can you feel the muscle not just squeeze, but pull it in? So your pelvic floor muscle, we talked about does that squeeze in the lift? If it's too weak, it will only squeeze. It needs at least a grade three out of a five strength to actually produce a lifting. So if you're only at a grade one or a grade two strength, you're only gonna squeeze. So if you insert your finger and it's just squeezing, it's not trying to pull your finger in further, it's on the weaker side. So here's our list. Can you, or do you think you can check off whether or not it's too weak? So can you fix this with exercises? Yes, absolutely. So if your pelvic floor is strong, yet you're still leaking, don't worry. We're also going to figure out why that is. If it is weak, stay tuned because we still need to check a few more things. So it's actually very common to have tightness in your pelvic floor. It's a muscle that can get tight and tense just like your upper neck and shoulder muscles do. So picture that office worker that's sitting at their desk all day long, their muscles, you know, they'll get tight, they'll get tense. You can find sore spots in there. Um, our pelvic floor tends to be a muscle that carries some of that tension as well. So when it's tight or when it's normal, think of it as that nice bowl of muscles. When it's tighter, think of it as more going straight across and that's gonna cause problems for you. So signs of a tight pelvic floor, do you have at least two of these? Urinary frequency, so peeing a lot, or more than two to five, more than every two to five hours, or more than seven to eight times in a 24 hour period. That can be a cause of having tightness in your pelvic floor. If you get strong urges to urinate, so you get that strong panicky urge, oh my God, I gotta get to the bathroom right now. If those are hitting you all the time, it could be because there's tightness in your pelvic floor. Um, sensations that you're not emptying your bladder fully, that can be a sign of tightness. You get pain with intercourse. You get low back or pelvis or glute or tailbone pain is a sign of a weak or a tight pelvic floor. Um, constipation, difficulty initiating or starting that flow of urine. Um, stress incontinence, so that's that leaking with the jumping, sneezing, coughing, and you'll notice that that is on both lists. Uh, could be weak, could be tight. Stress or anxiety. That's sometimes a sign that there's tension or tightness in there and a poor breathing pattern. So we're gonna come back to another way to tell if this is you. But from that list, can you check off for now? Do you have suspicions that you have tightness in your pelvic floor? So can you fix this with exercises? Yes, absolutely. Okay, coordination. And I'm gonna give you away a little tip that most people do not know. Our pelvic floor, and our diaphragm, which is our breathing muscle, are supposed to work together. They're a team. They're supposed to work together in coordination. So see from this picture, see how they're rising and lowering together. So as the pelvic floor goes down, your diaphragm is also going down. As the pelvic floor is going back up, the diaphragm is also going back up. So they are rising and lowering together as a team. We need this coordination to stabilize our spine, to stabilize our pelvis, and also to keep us dry. We need that coordination. So where most of us go wrong is our breathing pattern has changed over time. So I want you to take a deep breath in and pay attention to what happens. Take a deep breath in. Right? Do your chest and shoulders rise when you do that? Does your belly puff out? Does your rib cage expand all the way around? What happens when you do that? When we do take a deep breath in, our diaphragm is supposed to lower. So that's a muscle sitting underneath your lungs in your rib cage. We take a deep breath in, our, our lungs fill with air, our diaphragm will lower down. This also helps to, right, if we look back at that picture, when our diaphragm lowers, our pelvic floor will lower and relax. 
if your breathing pattern is mostly up into your chest and your shoulders, and this is what I see all the time, I ask someone to take a deep breath in and they do. So when we do that, it's not actually lowering your diaphragm. So that air is coming in and it's going straight up as opposed to going down into filling our lungs, filling our rib cage. So because it's not moving your diaphragm very well when you're breathing like that, it means our pelvic floor is not moving very well. So it's missing out on all of that movement through the day. It's also commonly causing that uncoordination because they lose connection with each other. You're breathing all the time, your diaphragm's not really doing much, and now it's losing that connection with your pelvic floor. So that can lead to tension because it's not getting a lot of time or a lot of chance to actually relax. This also makes the movement in it a lot less overall. So it can also lead to weakness. So think about when you're doing a bicep curl, you are rising and lowering that weight all the way. So I'm going all the way down to the bottom, going all the way down to the top. And so imagine if you're doing a bicep curl and you're only actually moving through a small range of motion. It's, it's gonna be a lot less efficient. And that's often what's happening when we're not breathing properly and we're not breathing with our pelvic floor exercises. So well, let's try this. We talk about a Kegel as lifting our marble or lifting our pelvic floor. And that's where most people focus. Any, you know, if, if you're about to do any pelvic floor exercises, that's where everybody focuses. Um, we're all focused on the strength. Do you ever think about actually relaxing it? Um, so I want you to take a deep breath in. Pay attention to your pelvic floor. Do you feel anything when that happens? It should be gently lowering or and relaxing. Um, if there's a good chance, if you're here listening to this right now, you're not going to feel anything. And that can be another sign of tension as well. Okay, so I want you to try this now. I want you to try to exhale and Kegel or lift your marble at the same time. So think, breathe in, breathe out and Kegel at the same time. Okay, so breathe in. Breathe out and Kegel. Does that feel awkward? Is that difficult to coordinate? Do you want, some people want to do it in reverse, so they feel like they want to inhale or breathe inwards and Kegel. Um, so this is your coordination. This is seeing how well your body or your diaphragm and your pelvic floor are actually working in coordination. This is how they're supposed to function. This should feel very natural and easy to do. Um, and so there's a good chance if this does not feel easy and natural to do, if this takes a lot of thought to try to figure out what you're trying to do or your body is wanting to do it opposite, you are not coordinated. So you can have a perfectly strong pelvic floor and still be leaking pee because your core is not functioning or your pelvic floor and your diaphragm are not functioning in the way that they should. So it's their job, that inner core or that connection between that diaphragm and pelvic floor it's their job to contract automatically when we're moving. For example, when we lift, when we stand up, when we jump. If they're not working together anymore, it doesn't matter how strong your pelvic floor is. If it's not working and you go to lift something or you go to jump, it's not kinking off your, your, your urethra when it needs to. You're going to pee. Um, and so I've had many, many, many women who are, you know, I'm so focused on Kegels all the time, but when we actually test them out a little bit, it's that uncoordination that's actually the only reason behind their leaks. Once we figure that out, the leaks go away. So can you check off? Are you coordinated? Was that something that was easy for you to do, that exhale and Kegel? So can you fix this with exercises? Yes. Okay, we're gonna check your reflex. I want you to put your hand on your belly, so right around your belly button, and you're gonna give me a big cough. <coughs> so what happened? Did your hand that's on your belly, did it pull in or did it push out? Try that again if, you, if you're not sure. <coughs> okay, if your reflex is working, it should pull in, not push out or if you pay attention to that pelvic floor, what is happening? If you cough, <coughs> are you pushing down into your pelvic floor or are you doing a Kegel? It should be doing a Kegel. 
that is our coordination. If we think about what a cough is, it's a really strong exhale. So with an exhale, when I'm breathing out, my diaphragm should be lifting, which means my pelvic floor should also be lifting. So if you're finding your hand is pushing out into your belly, or if you're noticing that your pelvic floor is pushing down, or pushing down as opposed to kegeling up, that means your reflex is not working, um, and so it's not protecting. So we're basically, when your pelvic floor is pushing down, or when your belly is pushing out, it means you're relaxing your pelvic floor. You're basically opening up those floodgates to your urethra, saying, hey, come on out here. Um, and so that's the reason for those leaks behind that cough or sneeze. You can have, again, a super strong pelvic floor, but when your reflex isn't working, that can be a reason behind those bladder leaks. So can you check off? Is that reflex working? Yes or no. Can you fix this with exercises? Yes. Okay, we're gonna check your fast twitch now. Every muscle is made up of different fibers, every muscle in our whole body. Some are needed for endurance, while others are needed to react quickly. Uh, so think of, you know, a pen is rolling off the table and your arm reaches out really quickly to grab that pen. It's th those are those fast twitch muscle fibers in your arm that are reacting to that situation. So guess which muscle fibers we really need when we, f when we cough or when we jump or something quick like that. Which muscle fibers in your pelvic floor do you think we need to, to uh, be working for us the, the most? It's going to be the fast twitch. We need those at top notch capabilities. So I want you to try contracting and relaxing your pelvic floor quickly, but you need to make sure you're fully relaxing your pelvic floor between each one. So you're gonna think of doing that pelvic floor squeeze and lift or that Kegel and then let it relax. So think lift your marble, drop your marble all the way back down to the bottom. I'm gonna start a timer here for 10 seconds and I want you to count how many you can do in that 10 seconds. Okay, ready, set, go. Stop. Okay, what number did you get to? How many did you do in that 10 seconds? We should be able to do 10. So we should be able to do 10 in 10 seconds and that tells us that you're, if you can do that, your fast twitch is functioning just fine. If it's less than 10, keep practicing. Okay, can you check off? Is your fast twitch too slow or is that functioning just fine? Can we fix this with exercises? Yes. Glutes. Okay, this is number six. The last thing we're gonna check, your glutes are your bum muscles. They are located on the outside of your pelvis. So if we look back to our pelvis here, our pelvic floor is in the bottom, our urethra, so it's attaching around here, our glutes are essentially out here on the back of our pelvis here. If they are weaker, your pelvic floor has to try and work a lot harder to stabilize your pelvis. So that often means it's not available to do its own job because it's compensating for those weak glutes. So how do you know if you have weak glutes? So some hints are a flat mom bum. So is your bum or are your glutes really flat? Can you fill those pants out? That is a sign, obviously, if your muscle fibers are stronger, they're gonna be a little bit larger. So having that flat mum bum um, is often a sign that your glutes are a little bit weaker. Your posture, so this is actually a uh, normal posture here. This is an anterior pelvic tilt, and I call these false glutes because it looks like she's got a really nice glutes there. There's some nice definition, but it's because her pelvis is actually tilted forward Right, so her, you know, we're looking at the pelvis from the back, from the side here, her pelvis is tilted forward. So it actually makes those glutes stick out farther. They're not actually larger muscle fibers. This is actually a sign of weaker glutes. Um, so if you stand sideways in the mirror, look at your pants waistband. See how her hers goes straight across here in that nice normal pelvic, uh, nice normal posture. And then see how it tilts forward here where she's standing in that anterior pelvic tilt. See how she's got that large curve in her low back. So check that out standing sideways in a mirror and see. So that is, having a posture like this is a sign of weak glutes. If you want to know for absolute sure, I'm going to show you a video here of a test. 
So if you lay on your stomach, you're gonna think about gluing your hip bones to the ground. So you're not allowed to twist through your back. I want you, I'm gonna show in the video, I'm just gonna lift my leg up first. So see how much height I get, see how high I can lift that leg. Some people who can't lift it very high, that's a sign of some weakness. And then the second time I'm gonna lift, and I've got my husband here, he's pushing down on my foot, putting some pressure down, so you should be able to hold it up. Okay, so here I go, just lifting, see the height that I can get without twisting through my back. Okay, I'm lifting again, and then I can hold with some fairly good pressure there. Right, that's a sign I've got some strong glutes. Um, you can test that out on yourself and see how you measure up there. Okay, so you can check that off, see whether or not your glutes are strong. Can you fix this with exercises? Yes, of course, of course. Okay, let's go back to those four reasons that you're still having those bladder leaks and let's line them up with what we figured out what is wrong with our pelvic floor. So the number one reason you're still having bladder leaks is you're only doing your Kegels sitting at a stoplight or laying in bed. And th those are just the most common places people tell me that that's what they're normally doing. So what does this fix? Only this first one here. So if you're just doing Kegels again, it's just that isolated strengthening contraction of your pelvic floor. It's only going to fix if your pelvic floor is purely weak. So if it's only weak, but it's not, it's, you know, it's not too tight, it's coordinated just fine, the reflex is working fine, the fast twitch is fine, your, your glutes are fine, that might help you then. But if any of these other things are also going on, that's why those aren't just helping you. Uh, the, the other thing is that you know, when we're doing Kegel sitting at a stoplight or doing them laying in bed, that's not when we're leaking. Right? Who is leaking pee when they're laying in their bed or when they're sitting in their car at their stoplight nice and still? Um, not very many of us. We're leaking when we're sneezing, when we're jumping, when we're lifting something. And so that's how we need to teach our pelvic floor how to contract, how to work for us. That's how we need to uh, learn how to strengthen our pelvic floor. It needs to learn how to handle those situations. So if we're leaking with a jump, when we're doing Kegels just sitting there, you know that's why it's not helping you um, and then again so buying kegel balls or a kegel trainer so essentially what you do is you insert it and then you do your kegels again and so again it's the same thing it's only going to fix if your pelvic floor is too weak it's not going to fix any of these other issues and so you're only doing it when you're still again you're not teaching your pelvic floor actually how to handle these situations when we're moving and then of course number three number four right obviously those are not going to be fixing those uh, six issues because we're not doing anything and so you know a big barrier is because we're not doing them correctly and I hope now um, you can realize that you are doing it correctly or because we didn't know that there was something you could do okay I want to show I'm just going to show you a couple of case examples of uh, real life patients of mine uh, so just some recent wins that we had so Lori was 67 she was having some bladder leaks since having kids but was noticing they were getting work worse with age so she was leaking in exercise class, out for walks, sneezing. She was finding herself, she was peeing a lot more throughout the day. She's getting really strong urges uh, that would make her leak if she couldn't get to a bathroom on time. She was always worried about going out and not being able to find a bathroom somewhere when she needed it. So when we assessed her, her strength was weaker. She didn't have any tension. She had poor coordination. Her reflex was not active. Her fast twitch was weaker. Her glutes were moderate and she also had a grade one prolapse. So we worked on pelvic floor exercises in coordination with her diaphragm, got her coordination working. Pelvic floor exercises with movement and increases in that intra-abdominal pressure. Um, so worked on it while she was actually moving and doing the things that were making her leak. We worked a bit on urge suppression, reflux exercises, fast twitch exercises, glute exercises. She had a 90% improvement in her symptoms in just four weeks as soon as we got her on the right track of what she needed to be working on. So last one I'm going to show, Kelsey, she was 35, she was having bladder leaks since having her two kids. She was avoiding running around playing with her kids, she was nervous about sneezing while out in public for fear of peeing her pants. She thought it was just normal, right, normal part of having kids, she was told that was just something she was going to have to live with. Her strength was moderate, she did have some tension, her coordination was poor, her reflex was not active, her fast twitch was slightly lower, her glutes were weak. So we worked on pelvic floor exercises in coordination with her diaphragm, pelvic floor exercises with movement and increases in that in intra-abdominal pressure. We focused on the things that were making her leak. 
we gave her a few stretches and relaxation techniques. We did a few glute reflex exercises, glute exercise. She had a hundred percent improvement in her symptoms in six weeks. So now what? So I have an online program, Your Pelvic Floor and Bladder Restored, is designed for women of all ages who want to take control and improve their bladder leaks. This is not something we have to live with. So you will get immediate access to an online course platform that you can access from your phone, your tablet, your computer. It's going to give you short, simple, daily tasks, tips, education, and topics, exercises for three weeks and then a simple plan to follow after. So we're gonna teach you everything you need to know about dealing with your pelvic floor um, with daily little tidbits and tips, and then after you know everything, you're gonna get a little simple plan to follow to keep you on the right track. It's gonna teach you ways and strategies to implement it into your day rather than having to take time out of your day because let's face it, as women, we often don't have very much time. Um, it's a work at your own pace format and you get lifetime access. That means when life gets busy, you get off track, the program will be here waiting for you when you're ready to get started again. It's gonna include bonus optional workouts, things more like lower abs, more challenging pelvic floor exercises, glute exercises, so optional, lots of optional bonuses to suit your needs. So tons and tons of topics. Um, it, it's a short, you know, it takes usually anywhere from a two minute to a five minute video every day on an educational topic for those first three weeks. Um, and then, you know, I'm trying to keep your exercises to a minimum for about five to 10 minutes a day. So topics like how to stop actually leaking with coughing and sneezing, how to improve those small bladder leaks throughout your day, how to improve, improve the, your urges and frequency of peeing, what prolapse is and what you can do about it, how to do that Kegel properly, why you are still leaking, even if you just went pee, what you need to be doing besides Kegels, how to improve, improve your urges, what you need to do with your pelvic floor and what you should stop doing with your pelvic floor, how to make them a part of your day, why your bladder is leaking, which, so we're gonna learn the why your bladder is leaking, which makes it much easier to understand how doing the right things and exercises will resolve it. So some testimonials from recent graduates of the program. Um, Peggy, I take a weekly tap dancing class and have always needed a pad. After the first 10 days, it was not needed anymore. This was despite all the jumping we do. Today, I hauled my tires out of the car after getting my snow tires on and no leaking at all with lifting and carrying. Your course was a great mix of why leaks happen physically with just enough how to do things differently to prevent them. I really liked reading the day's lesson and then watching you explain. You have a great presentation and teaching style. I loved how matter of fact your approach is. So that was Peggy's testimonial four weeks into the program. Um, so Alina, my biggest takeaway, it's not just Kegels. And I hope that you've learned that as well today. There's so much more that we need to focus on when working on our pelvic floor. Our body is an interconnected system. And second most important for point for me, we need to practice these exercises while moving our bodies, not in a static position. So that was written three weeks into the program. Um, Debbie here, lots of great information, easy to follow program with life-changing results. And that was written four weeks into the program. So biggest takeaway I want you to take is when we're doing those Kegels in that static position, um, often that's only one small piece of the puzzle. Usually when we're leaking is when we're moving, we're jumping, we're coughing, we're lifting up something heavier. Um, so we need to teach our pelvic floor essentially how to deal with those situations. We need to teach it how to get to work with our body and you can get rid of those bladder leaks just like all the graduates from my program and just like I did.